Hello, you are watching a presentation on the syntax within of sentence structure. This presentation uh, was written and prepared by Jason Schneider, uh, ACW writing specialist. Sentences contain the parts of speech, and the parts of speech are the constituents that are the building blocks of a sentence. Syntax is the configuration and relationships among these constituents. Words comprise phrases, and phrases comprise clauses. However, one word for a noun and a verb can make a clause too. Determiners modify nouns, and complements modify subjects and objects. In order for there to be a sentence in English, there must be a subject and a predicate. If one of these are missing, then there is no sentence except in the case of an imperative sentence. Imperative sentences are commands. A sentence may have a direct object if the verb is transitive and an indirect object if there is a receiver of the action. Every sentence will consist of a subject and predicate. The terms subject and predicate are terms for the function of the forms such as noun phrases and verb phrases. There are two important terms to know. Number one, there are phrases, and number two, there are clauses. Phrases such as a noun, as noun phrases that are abbreviated MP will have a noun and possibly a determiner, an adjective, and optionally noun phrases may contain these, these determiners, adjectives, and prepositional phrases. Other phrases such as verbs contain obviously verbs as well as adverbs, adjectives, prepositional phrases, and nouns within the predicate. The first sentence pattern has a be verb and an adverbial that is typically in the form of a prepositional phrase. The forms of words refer to the parts of speech. The function of a word or phrase refers to how it modifies another word. As in the example, the prepositional phrase functions adverbially because it modifies the be verb. The adverbial upstairs modifies the be verb are. Typically, a subject complement follows a be verb. A subject complement renames or describes the subject before the be verb. The adverbial modifying the be verb is not a subject complement. Sentence pattern one is a special sentence construction from the other sentence patterns. Notice that when we diagram this sentence, the preposition on is placed on a slanted line, whereas the noun Friday is on the flat line extending from the slanted line. This is how to diagram an ad adverbial branching from a verb.
Describing the form of words, phrases, and clauses is done with the parts of speech such as articles, adjectives, adverbs, pronouns, verbs, be verbs, linking verbs, and prepositions. Whereas describing function in a sentence usually consists of terms such as subject, object, adjectivals, adverbials, transitive and intransitive verbs, be verbs, linking verbs, and prepositions. Notice that terms such as be verbs and linking verbs can be used to describe form and function. As said earlier, the preposition is written on the slanted line, and determiners and adjectives and adverbs are written on slanted lines under the noun, just like prepositions, because prepositions, determiners, adjectives, and adverbs modify words that are nouns and, and verbs. Prepositional phrases can infinitively follow one another, just as the line diagram shows. This is the recursive nature of language. In a sentence that follows pattern 2, this sentence has a be verb just as in the sentence from pattern 1. But this be verb connects the relation between a subject complement and subject. The subject complement does as it implies. It complements, or in other words, describes the subject. This particular subject complement takes the form of an adjective. Any complement following a be verb or noun is written on a flat line after a slanted line as shown. A complement can be an adjective or noun that describes another noun, whether the modified noun is a subject or object. When talking about sentence pattern 2, we will refer to the complement modifying the subject. In the diagram, an adjective or noun will follow a slanted line after the be verb to show that it modifies the noun as the subject in sentence pattern 2. In the verb phrase, the be verb links the adjective as a complement to modify the subject. In the diagram, the adjective ridiculous describes the noun price because subject complements such as ridiculous is describing the subject the price of broccoli as being ridiculous or priced unreasonably. Another form as a phrase that can describe the subject as a complement is a prepositional phrase in form and subject complement in function. In the diagram, the subject complement, in a bad mood, describes the subject the diligent students. Notice that the prepositional phrase is not written below the line that the noun students and be verb are because a prepositional phrase cannot be written under the line where the subject complement is if no other word occupies it. Essentially, it would be an empty slot, and we can't have that. The prepositional phrase is not modifying the subject complement because it is the subject complement. And more importantly, the prepositional phrase is complementing or describing the subject, the diligent students. Just as in sentence pattern 2, the subject complement in sentence pattern 3 is a noun that describes or renames the subject.
sentences of pattern four differ from sentences of pattern three and that the verbs in pattern four are not be verbs but linking verbs. Though be verbs can be substituted for linking verbs without much change in meaning, a linking verb dis differs from the be verbs because linking verbs convey the senses such as smell, feel, sound, and look. Another difference that linking verbs convey is the assertion of pre pre uh, presumptions such as using the linking verb seen. Sentences of pattern five have linking verbs just as sentences from pattern four. But sentences of pattern five complement the subject with nouns in contrast to adjectives. The adverbial prepositional phrases are optional because adverbials do not occupy a mandatory slot such as verbs, subjects, objects, and complements on the main flat line that we see I stopped written. These adverbials modify the verb and we can use as many adverbials as we wish despite how cumbersome this might become. Adverbials that modify verbs can be adverb phrases, too. Adverb phrases consist of adverbs that modify adjectives, verbs, and other adverbs. In this sentence, the adverb very is modifying another adverb fast, and the adverbial very fast is modifying the intransitive verb walked. Though the adverbial phrase on Friday night ends the sentence, we write it under the verb to show in the diagram that it is modifying the verb. Adverbials can be placed directly after the verb or at the end of a sentence. So there is some freedom where we might write adverbial phrases within a sentence. In addition, adverbials can precede the verb and still modify it. However, some adverbials cannot be placed just anywhere without changing the meaning in a sentence, such as the adverb only. Adverbs typically do not change the meaning because adverbs can be written before the subject, after the verb, and at the end of a sentence. However, adverbs such as only is an exception because it changes the meaning depending on where it is in the sentence. Sentences of pattern six have an intransitive verb. An intransitive verb is an action verb that has no direct object. Think of an action verb like a train. An intransitive verb does as it implies. It goes nowhere, which means that the sentence stops at the verb and does not move toward an object. However, this is not to say that we cannot have other phrases and clauses joined, but for this one sentence that contains a subject and a verb, it will not end with an object. Like the be verb in pattern one, the intransitive verbs reside, sneaked, and glanced in pattern six requires a preposition, and possibly a noun phrase, to function as an adverb or adverbial phrase that conveys a place. These three intransitive verbs are the exceptions from other intransitives and cannot end a sentence without an adverbial of place. The phrasal verb made up 
has the preposition up. That does not correspond with the meaning of the word up, but is an essential particle to conveying the meaning of reconciled differences. Therefore, because the phrasal verb is idiomatic, the meaning from the preposition up attached to the verb made cannot be predicted. However, the combination of the verb jumped and the preposition up does not constitute as a phrasal verb because the preposition up adds the meaning of direction, of jumping, and is predictable in its meaning. One way to dis distinguish transitive verbs from linking verbs is whether the noun as the subject is different and not the same as the noun that is the object of a sentence. In other words, the noun students before the verb organized does not refer to the same thing as the noun marathon after the verb organized. The two nouns as the subject and object do not refer to one another. Though we said that one method for distinguishing transitive verbs from intransitive verbs is to determine whether the two nouns, one before the verb and the other after the verb, refer to each other. But in the case of reflexive and reciprocal pronouns, this method does not work in these exceptions. Clearly, the verbs cut and love are not linking verbs and must be transitive because both verbs must enact on another noun that is the object of the sentence. The phrasal verb came by has the unpredictable meaning acquired in sentence one, whereas the preposition by answers from where the subject he came in sentence two. A way to test whether a verb and a preposition comprise a transitive phrasal verb is to make a sentence into a question by fronting the noun phrase from the object position. Sentence 3 shows us that it does not contain a transitive phrasal verb because the preposition by conveys a place, and the noun phrase, the office, is not the object of the verb but, but the preposition by. Therefore, the verb came is an intransitive verb since there is no object but two prepositional phrases by the office and in a big hurry that answer the questions where and how did he come by the office. However, in sentence four, the noun phrase his fortune is the object of the verb came by, which means acquired. So the test fails, denoted by the asterisk before the sentence, because his fortune is not the object of the preposition by, but the transitive phrasal verb came by. Hence, we cannot separate the particle by from the verb came, lest the sentence will not make sense. In sentences that follow pattern eight, an indirect object conveys that there is a receiver. So, in the example, the professor is the indirect object who receives the homework. The noun phrase, their homework, is the direct object because it is the homework that the transitive verb gave is acting upon it. We can shift the indirect object either before the direct object or after the direct object. If the indirect object is shifted after the direct object, then the preposition to will precede the indirect object, except in cases such as sentence eight that requires the preposition for instead. For example, 
the indirect object, the professor, is shifted after the direct object, their homework, preceded by the preposition to in sentence five. Whereas the indirect object, the professor, cannot be preceded by the preposition to when the indirect object, the professor, is shifted before the direct object, their homework. Sentences one through four have the indirect object preceding the direct object, such as the proper noun, Mary, before the noun phrase, the prize. Conversely, sentences five through eight shift the indirect objects through the direct object, such as the direct object, the prize, followed by the indirect object to marry. When the direct object is a pronoun, the direct object must precede the indirect object and the indirect object must follow a preposition when the indirect object follows a direct object. For example, the direct object, their homework, is a noun phrase, is, that is a noun phrase, can be replaced by the pronoun it. Once we say the pronoun it for the noun phrase, their homework, the pronoun it must follow directly after the verb such as gave from sentence three. If we were to try shifting the direct object it after the indirect object the professor, the sentence will become ungrammatical because direct objects in the form of a pronoun must follow the verb and precede the indirect object. Like patterns two and four, the relationship between the direct object and object complement is similar to the subject and subject complement. In the sentence, the students consider the teacher intelligent, the noun phrase, the teacher, is described with the adjective intelligent. Whether a complement functions as a subject complement or object complement, a complement describes a noun, noun phrase. Complements describe noun phrases by complementing noun phrases. Hence, we use the term complement. Another way of thinking about object complements is to think of the direct object, the teacher, and the object complement intelligent as a way of saying that the teacher is intelligent. Object complements do two things in sentences. Number one, The object complement completes the meaning of the verb. And number two, the object complement describes the direct object. Pertaining to sentences one and two, the meaning does not change when the object complement read is omitted in sentence two. However, pertaining to sentences three through six, the meaning changes because of the context that the sentences may occur. For example, sentence five conveys that the teacher merely modified the test to be easy for students to take in contrast to the test being difficult, whereas in sentence six, the teacher completely created, not modified, the test. A change in meaning between sentences three and four occurred too. In sentence three, the students assert an opinion about their teacher. But in sense four, the students choose the teacher. Watch for sentences with these verbs because the meaning a sentence conveys may change depending on whether there is an object complement. This list of verbs are especially sensitive to whether there is an object complement. Just as in sentence pattern nine, the object in sentence pattern 10 has a noun that functions as an object complement and modifies, that is, describes the direct object. 
as in the example, the object complement, a, a challenge, is a noun phrase that describes the direct object, the course, that is another noun phrase. A method for testing whether there is an object complement is to insert to be between the direct, direct object and object complement. The complements in sentences one and four pass the test, so we can verify whether the adjective easy and the noun phrase a challenge are object complements. However, the adverb easily and the noun phrase the hard way fail the test because both function adverbally and answer the how about the verb rather than the function adjectively as easy and a challenge. Before we see how some object complements connect to direct objects, the term expletive must be defined because the sentences we will discuss next will require the use of the word as as an expletive. The word as signals whether there is an object complement. As you can see, sentences one through four have the word as that connects the object complement to the direct object of the sentence. Sometimes the word as is optional, but in other cases it is required. When a sentence has the verbs refer to and know, the word as is always required to connect the object complement to the direct object. To review what we had discussed, what sentence pattern is this sentence? Can you diagram it? Here's one clue. This is an imperative sentence, so you can identify where is the subject. What is the subject? Can you identify where it is? As said from the beginning, because this is an imperative sentence, the subject you is implied. If you chose pattern 10, then you're correct. If you're still having trouble understanding the diagram, don't worry so much about that. The important thing is that you understand the form and function of the words in the sentence. Though the sentence is an imperative sentence, the subject to you is implied because the sentence is a command, whereas if this were any other kind of sentence, then the subject would be obvious. This sentence might be harder to diagram, but look for the main subject and verb to figure out what to write on the main line within the diagram. You can stop the video or, or pause the video to take time to work on this sentence. It might take some time, so we'll move on. Subordinators connect clauses and phrases just as coordinate conjunctions, but subordinate conjunctions connect dependent clauses. And here we see that when is connecting a subordinate clause. His father took him to discover ice. And also, as the subordinate conjunction, he faced the, squad, the firing squad. A 
Let's move on to a harder sentence and see if you can do it. Here's another sentence as a challenge. This one sentence, even though it is lengthy, from here on, try to diagram these few sentences on your own. Well, did you get it? Were you able to diagram it? This may take some time, but we have a few others. And this is the last sentence to analyze. Hopefully what we've covered so far will help you analyze these. Uh, if you're still having trouble analyzing these, which it takes time to, to practice, uh, you can stop by uh, Mountain View's Academic Writing Center and a writing specialist can help you. There are websites that can help with diagramming sentences too. Hopefully, this will be fruitful for you to learn the form and function within sentences. This is a good tool to reference whether you are parsing the syntax of sentences correctly. But remember, people are smarter than computers because this program cannot parse line, di line diagrams of sentences that are either too long or very complex. Just to reiterate, people are smarter than any program that is available on the web. So use it as a tool, but do not depend solely on it. Depend solely on what you think. Thank you for watching this video. For any questions on your writing, please visit the Writing Center in W114.